Google introduces its new quantum processor Willow, claimed to be inspired by nature. Is it a revolution or are we being misled? And what will this development change in our lives? Let's state this up front. This time, we might truly be facing a revolution. So let's go all in. Willow might alter the flow of our lives forever. This new processor demonstrates that Google experts have understood that increasing the number of qubits alone is not enough in quantum computing. Willow has a capacity of 103 qubits. At first glance, you might say, what's the big deal about that? Because IBM's Condor processor already offers a capacity of 1,121 qubits, which is significantly larger. So, why is Google promoting a processor that is almost one-tenth the power of IBM's with such great enthusiasm? And why are they presenting it with a budget comparable to Apple's product launches? These questions make it clear that Willow's success is not solely about its qubit count. The details are truly remarkable, beyond remarkable, in fact, this time, we might leave our cautious stance behind. What has been achieved here is a real revolution. If Google's claims are accurate, and they must be aware of how incredible these claims sound, having published their findings as a scientific paper in Nature, then Google has opened the door to a paradigm shift in quantum computing. To grasp the significance of this revolution, we need to briefly explain the biggest problem in quantum computing, quantum error correction. Let's dive in. Quantum computers process information using very sensitive particles called qubits. These qubits are highly susceptible to environmental influences and tend to lose information easily. Think of it as a candle flame being blown out by the wind. Because of this, calculations performed by quantum computers often encounter errors. Essentially, during a computation, a qubit might lose its superposition state or experience an undesirable phase shift leading to incomplete or incorrect results. For example, according to Google, Willow's single qubit error rate is about 0.4%, meaning that out of every 10,000 operations performed by a qubit, four result in errors. To visualize, during a computation, four out of 10,000 candles would be extinguished. Quantum error correction is a method developed to detect and fix these errors. Its purpose is to ensure that qubits can produce the correct result without mistakes. You can think of it as correcting a wrong musical note or finding extinguished candles in a room. Without this correction, quantum computers cannot reliably solve complex problems. A significant portion of a quantum computer's resources is devoted to correcting these errors. As the number of qubits increases, errors grow exponentially meaning that merely increasing the number of qubits does not make a quantum computer as fast as desired. In summary, quantum error correction is the key to the reliable operation of quantum computers. Essentially, the holy grail of quantum coding is finding a way to increase the number of qubits while preventing errors from growing too rapidly. Here's the breakthrough. According to Google's written statement during Willow's launch, today, the results we publish in Nature demonstrate that the more qubits we use in the Willow chip, the fewer errors we encounter and the more quantum the system becomes. In essence, Google researchers have found a way to acquire the holy grail of the quantum computer world. What does this mean? While the error rate of their 53-qubit Sycamore processor was 10 errors out of 10,000 operations, the 103-qubit Willow processor achieves only four errors in 10,000 operations. Not only have they made error correction faster, but they have also reduced the occurrence of errors. And on top of that, they've managed to reduce the error rate exponentially as the number of qubits increases. This breakthrough is so monumental that they felt compelled to publish their work in a peer-reviewed journal to substantiate it. In the graph presented during the launch, you can see Willow's error correction rate per cycle. The vertical axis shows the error rate per round, while the horizontal axis represents surface code distance. Google has doubled the number of qubits while reducing the error rate tenfold. This is one of the two holy grails of the quantum computer world. In another graph shown during the launch, you can observe how the error correction area expands. As this area grows, the speed at which you find extinguished candles increases. However, Google is not just boasting about improved error correction. They are also emphasizing that the errors themselves have decreased, which is the revolutionary part of the story. 
Since the subject is highly technical, Google simplified things by stating that this new processor solved a random circuit sampling problem, which would take classical computers 10 septillion years, or 725 trillion times the age of the universe, in just five minutes. At first glance, it's clear that the results point to an entirely new paradigm. But what exactly is this problem, and more importantly, how will it change our lives? To simplify greatly, the RCS problem is essentially a benchmark demonstrating the performance of a quantum computer. More realistically, it shows how much better a quantum computer is than a classical one. To illustrate, imagine an enormous room filled with trillions of keys, and your task is to match 100 keys to the correct locks. This new processor achieved this in just five minutes. If you're wondering how this calculation changes our lives, we need to discuss another revolution enabled by this processor. According to Google's written statement, the qubits in their previous Sycamore processor could maintain their superposition for 20 milliseconds, whereas in Willow, this duration has increased to 100 milliseconds. This improvement allows a single qubit to perform five times more operations. However, with 105 qubits, this leads to an exponential increase in computational power due to quantum tunneling and quantum entanglement, making it challenging to calculate the full extent of this boost. For context, recent laboratory experiments have extended the superposition duration of superconductors to 23 minutes. If such power can be achieved at just 100 microseconds, it's hard to predict what 23 minutes might bring. What can such a computer do? Google seems to have already chosen its market for this new processor. In both their written statement and YouTube broadcasts, they announced their focus on solving major computational challenges in the energy and pharmaceutical industries. This declaration was intentional. Both sectors have access to enormous resources and a dire need for more powerful processors. For instance, the pharmaceutical industry struggles with issues like protein folding and molecular dynamic simulations due to insufficient computational power. Similarly, the energy sector requires massive computational power to discover and design new materials for high-efficiency solar panels or energy storage devices. And when it comes to fusion simulations, the computational power required is truly immense. If Google's claims are true, it won't be long before pharmaceutical and energy companies start renting this processor, leading to revolutions in both industries that we can't yet fully foresee. For science enthusiasts, Google's decision to publish their research in Nature demonstrates both the validity of their claims and the difficulty of replicating their achievements. And as a final note, looking at Google's roadmap for quantum computing, their target is clear. One million qubits. If you like our videos, please comment, share, and help us reach more people. See you in the next development.